Hello everyone, in this tutorial series I will show you how to create sniper shooting mechanic. Such mechanic can be seen in multiple games nowadays, like Battlefield, Sniper Ghost Warrior or Sniper Elite. This is not a tutorial for completely beginners, but if you know the basics of scripting in C Sharp and you are able to create simple scene with animations, you should have no problem with following this tutorial and making your own sniper shooting game. In the first video, we will focus on creating basic parabola projectile shooting without wind and any UI. To begin, I have prepared for you a simple scene with some enemies and animated sniper rifle. You can download this scene from GitHub link in the description below. Sniper shooting mechanics can be quite challenging to make. If we want to make bullet in Unity that falls after some time, the first what comes to mind is using the rigid body and its physics system. But there are some issues with this solution. The sniper bullet moves with speed about 900 meters per second, so the bullet in every fixed update would have to teleport about 18 meters. There is pretty high probability it would miss the target that we would expect it to hit. This is why in most games in the shooting mechanics, ray casting is used. It projects straight ray in space, so it wouldn't miss anything on its path. But there is another issue with ray casting. The ray is straight and it doesn't curve or fall and it hits the target instantly even if it is kilometers away. So how to solve this problem? We can divide our shot into time steps. In each step we can cast the ray approximately along the projectile parabola. The hard part of this task is that we have to calculate these points on parabola ourselves. But first, let's look into our scene. We already have a script prepared called Shooting Manager that is responsible for playing shooting animations. It calls shoot method inside which we are gonna write our code that will be creating and shooting our bullets. We're gonna also need a few new properties. Shoot speed. Gravity force. And bullet lifetime. Let's create a simple bullet object with a trial renderer for some nice effect and assign it as a prefab for shooting manager class. Now we will instantiate bullet prefab at our shoot point inside the shoot method. Let's create a script for our bullet. We're gonna need in it properties like speed, gravity, start position and start forward direction. I've created the boolean variable is initialized that prevents the update and fixed update methods from doing anything before the initialization. I've also created the float variable time, which later I will rename it to start time, because it is more accurate name since it will store the time when the shot began. In monobehavior class we cannot have a constructor, so we will make the initialize method that will have a similar task. In this method we're gonna assign the needed properties. At the beginning of the update and fixed update method we check if the class is initialized. If the script is initialized, inside the fixed update we check if the start time is set, and if it is not, we assign to it the current time. Now we need a function to get the position on shoot parabola at given time. But how to calculate this? Firstly, we're gonna need the start position and rotation of the shot. Next, we take the forward vector of this start point and we normalize it. 
to get the bullet position after a given time, we multiply the speed of the projectile by the flight time and the forward vector. We can add the result vector to the start position and we got the position to which the projectile would fly without gravity force. To add the gravity impact, we have to add to this position the vector of the distance in which gravity would move the bullet. To calculate this, we multiply the gravity acceleration by the time of the bullet flying squared, since it is the acceleration and not the velocity. Now we can add the gravity vector to our result, and we get the bullet position after the given time. Similarly, we calculate the next point. Now we just have to get two of these points in each fixed update and cast the ray between them. We repeat this process in every fixed update until we hit something or we exceed the lifetime of the projectile. So let's implement this in code. First, we create the function cast ray between points that will take the two points on parabola and return boolean value and hit info if the ray hits something. When casting the ray, we have to remember to give it the proper length, otherwise it will be infinite. Next, in the fixed update method, we calculate the current and next bullet flight time. Then using our prepared methods, we calculate the two positions and we pass them to the cast ray between points method. We check the result of this method inside the if statement. If the returned value is true, we execute our code that we want on the hit. For now, when we hit something, we will just destroy our bullet object. For our projectile to move smoothly, we will put the code responsible for its movement inside the update function. Now we need to call the initialize method after instantiation of our bullet inside shooting manager class. And the destroyed bullet after its lifetime. Let's assign proper values to shooting manager component and test if it is works. And of course this does not work, because I forgot to assign the bullet parabola script to our prefab. But after fixing it, everything works fine. To see where our bullet is hitting, we can add some event on the projectile collision. For example, we can spawn some particles. To add this behavior, we will create an abstract class for shootable objects. In this way we can easily make many classes that behave differently when hit. For example, hitting enemies can give them damage or trigger death animation, while hitting a wall would spawn some particles. Let's create the script for hitting the enemy. We will spawn red particles there and enable enemy ragdoll physics. I've already created simple class responsible for enabling and disabling enemy ragdoll, so we just need to call its method. The enemy hit class has to inherit from the shootable object class, and there we will create an implementation of the onHit method. First, we instantiate the particles prefab. Then we get its particle system component and we change the start color to red. Lastly, we enable enemy ragdoll and we destroy our particles after some time. Similarly, we will create the script for walls. But this time we will set the start color of the particles to the color of the main material of an object. To do this, we get the mesh renderer component. 
and if there is one, we get its main material. Let's assign all of this to our scene. I've already prepared a simple particle system that creates this single burst of particles. We have to assign the enemy hit component to every game object of enemy ragdoll collider. And lastly, we have to call the onHit method in our bullet script. Everything seems to work fine, but let's add some impact force to the enemies that we hit. To do this, we need to get the rigid body component and add the force to it at the point of the hit and with the hit rotation. To control how much force we apply at the hit, we create the new impact force variable. Now we have to assign values to the new variable in every enemy hit component. I think now this looks better. We could finish there, but there is one minor issue with this still. When we get unlucky and the casted ray ends right in front of some collider, then when this collider moves forward in the next frame, it may turn out that the beginning point of the next ray is inside this collider, so despite that parabola goes through this collider, the rays won't detect it. The solution for this problem can be casting two rays at each fixed update, so that in every next update the last previous ray is casted once again. In this way we can avoid such situations. So in code it would be just adding one more ray checking for previous position. We create new variable previous time. Then if it is greater than zero, we calculate the previous point position and we cast the ray between previous and the current point. For the code to be more readable and not redundant, we can extract the part responsible for behavior on hit into the separate function. Now everything should work well. In the next video I will show you how to add wind and wind matter, as well as how to make the scope calibration, so stay tuned and hit the subscribe button to be up to date with all my videos. Thanks for watching and happy coding. Cheers.